Welcome to this advanced series on ADF. My name is Lynn Munsinger and I'm a product manager on the JDeveloper and ADF team. In this ADF Insider session, we'll focus on building user interfaces. There are several layout goals to keep in mind when building user interfaces. The first is that you want to be abstracted from having to use HTML tags such as div and table and list. The second main goal is that you want to provide a consistent layout behavior. This is uh, consistency across browsers, consistency depending on the user's screen resolution or screen size, and you also want to manage the browser geometry. This means that you'll have some areas of the page that stretch to fill the available space and some areas of the page or the viewport that flow and this allows for scroll bars. The thing to keep in mind is that browsers are unreliable. Some things can stretch, other things have to flow. Percent dimensions can mean different things, so you want to make sure that you avoid using inline style and setting dimensions such as width and height to 100% in order to achieve stretching. We'll talk about some of these goals as we go through the rest of the slides. When you're building layouts, one of the main things to keep in mind is to build a prototype and determine what you want the page or the view or the part of the page or the fragment to look like. This might be, you know, pretty low tech uh, piece of paper or a whiteboard or a scanner with a camera or a smartphone to capture the layout that's been drawn on a whiteboard. Obviously, it's very quick and interactive. You can do this in a boardroom, it's inexpensive. But it's hard to revise that in subsequent iterations of the layout. So it's best to try to capture it some way electronically so that revisions can be made. PowerPoint or other presentation tools are pretty ubiquitous in the organization, so it's easy to distribute, but it can be slow to work with. Unless you are very well versed in PowerPoint, it's difficult to know how to size things appropriately and build out components of a page because PowerPoint is obviously typically used for, for text display. Uh, Visio is designed for the kind of prototyping that would be good for developing ADF applications or any type of user interface. It's an expensive tool. It's Windows UI focused. It's not web focused, um, so you will need to have a license for it. But it can be a, a good tool for doing some prototyping. Dreamweaver and Adobe Il Illustrator give you a good prototype, but they are going to give you something that looks like what it will look like in that technology. They're too technology specific when you're thinking about building a layout based on a specification. The Dreamweaver Adobe Illustrator spec will look basically like an HTML page, and so it's going to limit you in terms of the capabilities and the kind of creativity that can be involved in developing a prototype. For low fidelity prototypes, especially something based in a browser, we use internally and recommend Balsamic. It's a great way to provide you with a rich UI prototype. It's very, very easy to use. It's not free, but it's relatively inexpensive at $79. And this gives you the ability to drag in different types of components. You know, on this page you see the Chrome for a web page and the uh, estimation of what a map might look like and a toolbar. On the left hand side we have some navigation components with some different types of input styles, a date picker as well as a drop down and some links. And so you can see very quickly how you could design a site or indeed a page or a part of a page using Balsamic. For better prototyping, you can use professional graphics design tools. Again, that's going to give you a technology-specific type of layout or prototype with Dreamweaver or Illustrator. With JDeveloper, you can actually prototype using the actual ADF faces components that you will be using in implementation. And you can use the placeholder data control to give you a way to see the size and shape of the data that you're going to be working with. The benefits of using JDeveloper are that it works with skins so that you can see what the UI will look like after your organization's skin is applied. 
This will model both the user interface and the interaction. It can be done by a developer, which is good because it means that the developer will be involved in the layout process and the UI design process and therefore will know how to achieve the layout that has been spec'd out. You'll know that the UI is achievable because the developer will have the skills and you'll be using the actual components, the ADFACES components, that go into building that UI. It's also a great place to implement UI patterns, whether you have created them for your own organization or you've borrowed the ones that are on OTN from Oracle. If you know of an existing pattern that you want to make use of, of course you can create an implementation of that using the actual ADF phases components and developing that to spec. If you are using Microsoft Visio for prototyping, you can achieve a much higher fidelity result by using a set of over 40 Visio stencils and a template that are based on the ADF Faces components. You can download the stencils from samplecode.oracle.com. Just click on the JDeveloper and ADF section there. The stencils allow you to build a prototype in Visio that looks like what you see here in the screenshot using the layout look and feel and the default shapes and sizes that you would get if you were using the real ADF faces components in JDeveloper. When you develop with the placeholder data control or when you are mocking up data for the user interface using the placeholder data control, it basically will give you a way to create a data control used to show sample data. And so you can design that sample data based on static data or something coming from an Excel spreadsheet, or you can enter data directly. So for things like list boxes, you might enter yes and no, and for things like tables, you might want to use some data that you already have stored in a spreadsheet, or just type some up very quickly so that you can determine you know, how many columns and how many rows are about going to be displayed with this particular control, whether it's a list box or a table or a form. This also includes the ability to use master detail data, so it's coordinated when you develop the user interface, and that's just a nice feature of the data control so that you can see how the user will interact with the various row sets. This will populate the data control panel so it will look just like any other type of data control appears in the data controls panel, whether it's a ADF business component or a web service or an EJB based data control. This data control will look no different. So it's actually developing the UI just as you would for an actual implementation, but you're doing so with the placeholder control. To define the placeholder data control, you right click in the data control panel and choose create placeholder data type. And you can then define the attributes that you'll be using and you have the option to enter or import the data from uh, CSV files or spreadsheets saved as a CSV. So you can see the dialog here where I define the different attributes and their type and this will also give the user interface a clue as to which types of user interface components I want to build. So when I'm developing with the visual editor, if I drag a attribute that is of type string onto the page, I'll be given the choice to develop UI components of that type. If it's a date, I'll see the date picker by default. If it's a list box, I will see the different types of list objects such as radio buttons and check boxes and combo boxes, for example. The master detailed data for a placeholder data control can be automatically synchronized just like it is when you are developing with other types of data controls. You'll define that the first column in the master collection is used as a kind of primary key and um, you can edit the metadata behind the placeholder data control to change that if necessary. And then you can create a detail collection node by uh, selecting the master collection node and again choosing create placeholder data type from the right mouse click 
context menu. And this will allow you to then create a detail collection for that master object. This will create a link for you and you can modify that link in the dtlink.xml file that's created for this master detail coordination. So after you've used the placeholder data control to create some sample data, the next step is to use the JDeveloper IDE to create your layout. And the building blocks of a layout are these various components shown here. So the top left is the panel stretch layout. This is a stretched frame with different facets, top, center, start, end, and bottom. And the center facet is stretched to fill the available space. If there's nothing in a facet, it won't display. So that if something is located in the center facet, it will stretch to fill all of the available space within whatever container it might be in. If it's the most outer container, it's going to stretch to fill the entire browser space. On the top right is the panel splitter. This is a stretched box divided into two sections that are user modifiable in that the user can define the amount of real estate associated with either the first or second panel. We call these first and second panels instead of left and right for two reasons. One, because if we're in a bi-directional format, we might have right meaning something different than, than on the right side of the page. So we call these first and second for that reason, as well as for the fact that the panel splitter might be displayed horizontally and dividing the page between top and bottom. The panel dashboard components on the middle left section here, that gives you a stretch tiled structure of boxes. So this gives you a nice way to display multiple objects in a tiled manner. The panel group layout is used extensively. That's on the right of the slide here. And this gives you a series of components. What we've got here is just a series of text components. And we've got the layout set to scroll, which gives us a vertical scroll bar. You can also have the panel group layout set to horizontal or vertical or default. And we will talk about that layout style more in the following slides. The panel border layout on the bottom left is a flowing frame. This is a scrollable frame. This gives you top, start, center, end, bottom, and additional facets within each of those facets. So there's kind of a layering going on with facets here. And it gives you a lot of control over the placement of all of the different Chrome that might be attached to a page, such as copyrights and menu bars and title formats and all those kinds of things that go around the main content of a page, that would be a good use of panel border layout. On the bottom right, you see the flowing frame with a basically HTML table structure. These are some Trinidad HTML components. They're still part of the ADF Faces rich client component set, but they come from the Trinidad library. There's a table layout component, and then there's row layout and cell format. And what these components allow you to do is to do things like you see on the screenshot here, where we are defining things like cell padding and merging of cells to create cell headers for a particular set of components. So that's what the Trinidad cell format, row layout, and table layout components are used for. There's some additional headers to be aware of. On the top left, you see the panel box. This gives you a, a grouped box, or it can be used for a side container as well. You can see it can be collapsed and expanded. Beneath that is the panel accordion. This gives you a collapsible and expandable area, but within those, we've included show detail items so that we have the ability to collapse and expand accordions to show a particular set of contents. And so this is kind of a, a stacked version of the panel box. The nice thing about these components is that because they're ADF faces, the animations associated with expanding the second or third show detail item that's highlighted here is built into the component set. So you get a nice growing look to the expansion of that particular accordion pane. And you didn't have to write any AJAX to accomplish that.
On the right hand side you see the panel header at the top. This gives you several different facets for creating header structure and nested header structure and it can have multiple levels using the, the size attribute. The show detail header is like the panel header but it's collapsible so if you want to give the user the ability to show and hide some nested facets of show detail header or the show detail header itself you can provide that collapsible functionality and the show detail just by itself is collapsible but has a much simpler structure than the show detail header. Now this would be good for things such as extra text that goes along with a particular component, something like some help text or something um, kind of auxiliary to the content at hand. The user can just collapse it if they don't need to see that particular item. Tabs are another layout component that are frequently used. They give you a nice way of maximizing the amount of content you can get on a page without overwhelming the user and it also provides the user with some context as to which part of the page or, or view or task that they might be working on. The top item here is actually a navigation pane and there's a hint property for navigation pane that you can set to tabs which gives you this tab bar. You can then use a command navigation item to provide the UI and structure for each tab. And then you would use, uh, as you see on the bottom left, a decorative box to construct the body. In this case we've got a theme included with the body of the tab components for the command navigation items and that gives us this kind of blue shading and we'll talk more about themes later but that's an example of how you would stylize or give a theme or colorization to a component. The panel tab also gives you a tab bar and a tab body and you can use a show detail item within something similar to what we did with the panel accordion and this gives you the ability to see tabs in little less stylized format than using the command navigation item. So you have a couple of different options when you're using the panel tabbed ADF faces component. Another consideration when you're building layouts is how to organize and structure labels and fields. For example, if you're using panel form layout, you can specify the number of columns and rows that will be displayed. By default, the panel form layout is going to display all of its child components in a linear format vertically. So if you want some wrapping to occur, you can modify the properties of the panel form layout component. You can configure the label width and the field width to change the width of the input components themselves or output components if you're using a read-only form. Um, and this would typically contain your uh, input components and your select components and you can use panel label and message components around those input fields of the form if you want to align labels. And so that's what's happening when you drag a collection onto the visual editor in JDeveloper and the ADF faces panel form is selected as the type of display. What's being done there is that a panel label and message component is being created and within that each um, different type of input component is nested so that you will get a vertically aligned label as well as the input component next to it. If you want to separate sections of a form you can use the AF group component. Um, this will give you a little bit of highlighting around a certain group and it will also ensure that those components don't get wrapped regardless of what you might have set for the number of rows per column. Another consideration is using bulleted or ordered lists and you can use the panel list component to achieve that. So here's an example of the panel form layout and bulleted list components at work. So on the top you see the form layout component and it's nested neatly aligned labels and input text fields of various types. You can see that we're using a mix of labels for select one choice, input text labels, and the aligned panel label and message where there's some wrapping occurring 
on that panel label and message, but it is properly aligned. So you can play with these different labels and determine what suits your needs. We've got some wrapping going on with this form layout, and the, the wrapping might be set to 5 or 4 or even 3, and that would mean that three rows would be displayed. So you would have the first three input text labels displayed. But because there's a grouping of the last three on the left-hand side, the input text label, the in footer facet, and the panel label and message components, that set of components is grouped, and so it will not be wrapped around to the second column where the other select one choice columns are displayed. So you can see that by using both the, the rows property of the form as well as grouping components, you can get some different layouts and, for example, you know, never wrap the zip code away from the address fields that you might be creating. That would be a good example of some com components that you might want to group. And you can use skinning to change the dotted line or dashed line that you see to delineate that set of components. On the bottom, you see a panel list that is used to provide bulleted list as well as nested text items. Now let's talk a little bit about what it means to use a flow container versus a stretchable container. So here's the use of some different layout components. On the outer component, we have a panel stretch layout. Within the center facet of the panel stretch layout, there's a panel splitter component, and we know that the panel splitter will stretch to fill the available space, and it will stretch its child components. There's a panel group layout set to scroll on the left-hand side, and within that there is a panel collection and a table component. On the right-hand side, we only have a panel collection and a table component within that panel collection. We know that the panel collection stretches, the panel splitter stretches, and the panel stretch layout stretches. So let's see what this looks like when we include the data. What's happened here is that the panel collection component is stretching to fill the allowable space with the table. However, on the left-hand side, what you see is much less space taken up by the table. And this is because the layout property of the panel group layout was set to scroll. We'll see some rules for this, but this is just to give you an example of the different types of behaviors you'll see as these components are nested and start to work together. So when you're working with layout managers, your pages will contain a mixture of these stretching and flowing containers. The stretching will maximize the browser's viewport usage, and you will also use this to stretch any child components, such as the table example that we just saw. A flowing component would be an isolated set of components that are not supposed to stretch. And so if you're wondering where to start, a good place is to start with a stretchable outer frame. This gives you kind of the boundaries of the view, and that would typically be the boundaries of the browser. Within this, you would have different areas of the page or different sets of components that would be called flowing islands or scrollable areas of the page, and you would define those by wrapping them in flowing UI components. Here again, we revisit our stretchable layout managers, including panel stretch layout, panel splitter, panel group layout, and panel dashboard. So what do we mean by a flowing example? Well, we can look at Facebook. We've got our friend Maiko's Facebook page here. And we see that even if the browser space is maximized, there's some blank areas to the left and the right of the page. If we condense the amount of horizontal space assigned to the screen, then we'll see that we still don't get a scroll bar. It's a fixed size, so you have to have uh, basically a minimum resolution in order to view Facebook in this configuration. 
Some other examples of flowing and stretching components are this series of boxes that we'll talk about, our red and green and blue boxes. The first example here, we're just creating a flowing set of boxes where we're not stretching to fill any available space. So we use panel group layouts with the layout property set to vertical, and that contains our output text components, box one, box two, box three. Incidentally, you'll see that we're using the inline style property of panel group layout to assign a background color to these boxes. In practice, you wouldn't use an inline style component to do this. You would use uh, themes or skins or something more sophisticated. But for just testing the amount of space that a particular component is taking up within a container, this is a very good technique. So what we're doing here is we're setting the inline style property to a certain color to delineate which panel group layout or whatever UI component that we might be using, we want to determine how much space that's taking up uh, at runtime. So our second variation here, we want to stretch the first box. To do that, we wrap the components in a panel stretch layout and then we include the red panel group layout within the center facet of the panel stretch layout. We know that the center facet of the panel stretch layout will stretch to fill the available space. And the available space is everything that remains after the other facets of the panel stretch layout are calculated. And so this is like using the panel stretch layout to its capacity to provide you with geometry management. This is a, a, a very robust feature of using these layout components. Otherwise, you would have had to have calculated all of this real estate yourself using markup. So the remaining uh, components that will be displayed are in the bottom facet of panel stretch layout, and there are green and blue panel group layout components. In variation three, we want to stretch the middle box, and so we use the top and bottom facets of panel stretch layout. We set the top and bottom height properties of that to auto so that they calculate whatever the amount they need to display the text and then the remainder will be assigned to the center facet and that's our green box. In variation 4 we want to stretch the third box and so we put that in the center facet and put the red and green panel group layouts within the top facet of panel stretch layout. In variation 5 we want to stretch all of them evenly Again, we stick with the panel stretch layout outer component, and so we assign top height and bottom height percentage of 33%, and that allows for those components to stretch to that amount of real estate, and then the remainder is assigned to the center. Another variation is to stretch the first two boxes evenly, and so what we can do for this is to provide nested panel stretch layout components. So within one panel stretch layout component, we have a center facet and a bottom facet. And so that's where we get the amount of real estate that we're going to assign for the red and green boxes in the center facet and the blue box in the bottom facet. Within the panel stretch layout's center facet, we provide a second panel stretch layout component. And there we provide a top height of 50%. And the rest will be applied to the center facet which is where we put the green box. So again, we're using the layout components intelligently to provide the layout that we're looking for without having to uh, force the components. We're really working with the components here instead of forcing the components to maximize to 100% or do something that can be unreliable across the browsers. So some general tips when you're building page layouts are to minimize the number of layout containers on the page to make the page smaller and therefore faster to load. This is difficult to do in practice because you will use many layout containers, but you want to use the minimal number of layout containers that you need in order to achieve the desired layout. You'll also want to minimize the number of components that you need to stretch. That will make the page faster because those calculations don't have to be done while the page is loading. We'll use the AF spacer component instead of using padding and margins uh, because calculating the paddings and margins on components is very expensive. You can start with the quick layouts and we'll show you an example of those in a moment. And you should be testing every page and every view of every page in multiple browsers so that you know what to expect and what the user will see in different resolutions 
and avoid any uh, surprises at runtime. So here are those quick layout components and they provide you with several different ways to create a basic layout for your page. So you might have one, two, or three columns and within those columns have different types of styles where you have separated on the left and right or maybe you have a header area across all of the columns or maybe a header area only aligned to the left or the right hand side of the page and you can see that there's variations on these in the upper portion of this dialog box. Within those areas you'll have different flowing and stretching areas defined and so they might be flowing areas that are collapsible by the user that's where you'll see the kind of the dark arrows to show that that's a, a collapsible splitter component or it might be a locked area that takes up a fixed amount of space on the page and that's identified by the padlock icon and then additionally you might have a stretchable area your kind of main content area or it might be a flowing area which is indicated by the horizontal scroll bar along the bottom so you can see all of the different permutations and layouts that can be achieved by selecting the different columns and types and layout options for a particular layout that you might be building or for indeed a particular template. When you do build layouts, um, you should start with that stretchable outer frame and within that frame include your flowing islands. You should not attempt to stretch something vertically in a flowing island this will give you inconsistent results across browsers and it will also break the componentization of a page. For example, when you're building a page, you might not be building an entire web page. You might be building a fragment of a page that's going to be reused within other pages. And to ensure consistency, you don't want to try to stretch something vertically in that flowing island. For custom styling, you want to try to find some property of the component that allows you to provide that styling. For example, you can use the theme property of AF document to create a, a theme or in this case a coloring to the page and that will be modified by using the skin. So if the skinning color theme is changed from blues to greens then the dark theme would be changed to show kind of a darker green instead of hard coding that background to show the dark blue. So the declarative approach is good because you can use skinning and it also eliminates you from writing a lot of markup in order to create some type of look or feel to the page. You can do this using themes. You can also use the style class attribute. And there are several global selectors that allow you to provide a style to a particular component or a layout component. You can also use a custom skin. These can be developed using the skin editor to change how a component looks or to create your own global selectors. So here are a listing of each of the layout components and a cheat sheet that gives you the definitions of whether these components are stretchable by their parent and whether they stretch their children. The components that are stretchable by their parent and stretch their children are the panel stretch layout and panel splitter components as you've seen, the panel stretch layout uh, center facet that is. The panel dashboard component is stretchable by its parent and it will stretch its children if they are inside a grid. And the panel tab component is stretchable by its parent and it will stretch its children if there is only one child and you have set the stretch children property from panel tab to first. So for example, if you had a navigation pane within panel tab that would stretch its child, that, that uh, navigation pane child component if the stretch children property on the panel tab component was set to first. For panel group layout, if the layout property is set to scroll or vertical, it will be stretchable by parents, but it will not stretch its child components. For the panel group layout where the layout property is set to default or horizontal, that is not stretchable by its parent and it will not stretch its children. The panel form layout and panel border layout components are flowing containers, so they will not be stretchable by their parent components, 
nor will they stretch their child components. That's where you would use the different properties of the panel form layout or the panel border layout to achieve the desired layout effect. So there's some don'ts when you're building ADF faces page layouts. You should not embed raw HTML into your pages. This breaks the componentability of ADF faces and the nice features that we get when we use skinning and the guarantees that we get using ADF faces components about how they will display across browsers. So avoid embedding raw HTML in your pages. Use the component set and their properties as designed and work with the components and you will be able to achieve the desired layout. You should not use inline style for the same reason that we don't embed raw HTML. Um, you should instead use skinning. And do not try to stretch something vertically when it's inside of a flowing container. For example, do not try to stretch a panel form layout component because the panel form layout component is not going to stretch its children. Um, so if you try to do that by setting height to 100% or something that uh, forces things using inline style, you'll get inconsistent results. Don't specify the height value with a percent unit even if it's not 100%. This can be very difficult for the browser to determine what to do with that because of course the browser has its own vertical scroll bar. So this can give you duplicate vertical scroll bars if you are using a percent unit with height. You should not use the position style when you are developing with these components and you should not attempt to stretch any of the components by setting their width to 100%. And so the way around this, which is also the way around setting the height value to percent unit, is to surround the component that you need to be stretched with a component that can be stretched and a component that will stretch its children. I'll show you an example of that in the demonstration. So let's take a look at Michael's Facebook page and build out this page using the ADF Faces components. We'll start by using a stretchable outer frame and put everything in a panel stretch layout component as we've been instructed by best practices. We know that the Facebook frame is a flowing container so we'll include the panel group layout component with its property set to scroll so that we get a vertical scroll bar for this flowing container. Within there we've got a status bar and main content area as well as an upper content toolbar and so we've got the panel group layout set to vertical to display each of those components in a vertical manner. The next thing that we would add is a panel group layout with its property set to horizontal. This would give us the ability to define the amount of real estate taken up for the three columns in the main content area of Facebook. Within each of those main content areas, we'd have a panel group layout set to vertical so that those fixed areas would display their vertical content. Now let's see how to build layouts in JDeveloper. So here we are in JDeveloper. We have a example data model created. We might be using the placeholder data control, but in this case we're using actual data controls from business components. So let's start by building a blank page so we can see how all of these layout components work. I'm going to create a new JSF page and while I would typically start with either a template or a quick start layout, I'll start with a blank page so that we can see exactly how the layout components work together. We'll create a blank page and add a panel stretch layout component as our stretchable outer frame. I'll create some data bound elements based on the master detail relationship between departments and employees. This gives us a basic idea of what our layout will look like at runtime, but let's go ahead and run this to see what we would get in our browser. The tables are displaying and the master detail coordination is correct. But the tables are not stretching, even though they are in the center facet of a panel stretch layout. This is because even though the panel stretch layout is stretchable by parent components, it's not stretching its children because the table component cannot stretch. So let's change this layout. We'll start by 
uh, surrounding the department's table component with a component that can stretch. And the component that we'll use is the panel collection component. We'll save this page and refresh the browser to see what this looks like. So now we see that the department's table is stretching to fill the available space and we get some extra chrome here that comes along with the panel collection component. We also have some extra space on the right hand side and some chrome along the bottom. So let's work with these layout components to take off the additional components that we don't want. So we'll do that by changing the features off property of the panel collection. I'll set the features off property to include the components that I don't want added or the facets that I don't want to be included with that component. And to get rid of the extra white space at the right hand side of the table, I'll set the table's column stretch property appropriately. And I can choose any of the columns that I'd like to stretch, but in this case I'll choose the last column so that the last column will stretch to fill the available space. So let's refresh and see what this looks like. Right, now we've gotten rid of the status bar and the extra menu options for the panel collection that I didn't want, and we have the white space stretched by the last component here, uh, the last column. Now if I reorder these, uh, again the last column will remain stretched. So you can see that that's the layout components working with their nested children components to do the right thing depending on what we've defined. So this looks better. Now we want to stretch the employees table as well. It's not stretching so we might be tempted to just set the width property of the table to 100% using inline style but we know that that goes against best practices and could give us unpredictable results depending on the container that the page is placed in such as in a page fragment or a page region. So instead we'll use one of the built-in styles to stretch the table. So back in JDeveloper we'll look at the properties for the employees table and again we're going to use a style class here so we'll set the style class appropriately to stretch the width and we know that there is a style class called AF stretch width. This is available in the documentation. This gives us the ability to stretch the table appropriately. Let's save and refresh the browser to see what this looks like. Okay, so now the width of the table is fully displayed with AF stretch width and this looks better but we don't need to see the full length of the table because most of these departments only have a few employees and so what we want to do is get rid of some of the extra white space and give a scroll bar if the number of rows exceeds six. So we'll go ahead and take care of that and what we'll do is we'll set the auto height rows property to six as this allows us to see only a certain number of rows according to what we expect this to display. So this is a good case for using actual data or a prototype so that we know about how many rows we're going to display in this detail component. So we'll save the page and get back to the browser and refresh and now we see that the number of rows displayed is appropriate for the amount of space that we've allocated to the table and if it's more than that then indeed we see a scroll bar. So this looks good but there's still some extra space here at the end. We could stretch one of the columns like we did with the department's table or we could wrap this component in a panel group layout and what that would allow is for the table to provide scroll bars only when necessary. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll just select the table and surround it with a panel group layout component and in the panel group layout component I'll set the layout property to horizontal and you can read about all of these properties in the online documentation for each ADF faces component. So now I'll go ahead and save the page, refresh the browser, 
And now we see that we have a horizontal scroll bar if necessary. And that gives us the ability to scroll using the mouse wheel in this particular component. If there are less than six rows, then we just see the rows displayed nicely in the compact version of the stretched table. So you can see how you use the layout components together to achieve the desired result. Each time I was making a modification, I was working with the properties of the component and working with the styles available for the component in order to get the layout that I wanted. I wasn't trying to force anything by setting width and height properties to 100% or doing anything that violates the geometry management contract that these layout components have with the browser. For more information, access JDeveloper's homepage on OTN at oracle.com slash technetwork slash jdev. Thanks very much for your time.